Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be doing a demonstration of Talon's Open Studio uh, for MDM software. Um, I'm going to be doing a little bit of data quality and some data integration uh, for the database data that I'm going to be using. It's a um, it's actually two versions, basically three, three versions of a uh, library data I found on the internet. It's about uh, 17,000 records. Um, various information about US libraries. I'm going to go ahead and start a new project. And I'm going to skip registration. Now, one of the first things I'm going to be doing is the uh, data quality. Um, of course, before I can do any of the data quality stuff, I have to actually connect to the database. Now, um, this data I actually collected into a uh, comma separated value file and then loaded into a MySQL database. Um, so that database is what I'm actually going to be connecting to. Um, I'm also going to run through how to connect to a uh, delineated file delineated. I think they refer to it as file delineation. Uh, it's basically I can connect directly to the comma separated file. And so I'll show both ways of doing that. And then once we've kind of checked out the data, we'll go through their Talon's job uh, framework or whatever. And I show a couple of the tools they give you to do some filtering and some other uh, kind of data integration processes. Now, I come from a very uh, database light background. I know a little bit of SQL. I know no Java, which this is all Java-based software. Um, uses some SQL queries and stuff, but uh, so that's where I'm coming from. So I hope, hopefully, you'll get come me a little bit of slack since I don't come from quite that heavy of a technical background. But I have to admit, I had a good time playing with this software. I did go ahead and load all of this into a uh, virtual machine using a virtual box to give me a completely clean environment to work with. Which had the side effect of giving me an opportunity to flash my nerd card as I loaded it with Linux. Uh, one of the first things we got to do is let this generation engine initialize or else nothing else will work. Alright, now the first thing uh, we're going to need to do is, this is kind of the opening splash screen, is we want to go to profiling. Okay, so we go into this screen. Um, so right over here we have our basically our data uh, where we connect to our data. Some other stuff that, to be quite honest, I'm not sure exactly how to use. I know that the data profiling is where it stores like some analysis. You can generate some reports. Um, these are various libraries. I know that the uh, there's some stuff in here you can do for some of the other functions that again I don't quite know. I know that we will use some of these regex patterns. Um, as part of our data quality um, analysis. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself here, so let's go ahead and go down. We're going to go to DB Connections, and we're going to say Create Database Connection. I call this Library. Uh, and then you could put in Purpose and all that stuff if you're so inclined. I'm not. Development. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of different uh, database types that you can connect to. And we're going to connect to a MySQL database. Uh, login, root, password. This is on localhost. And okay, so I successfully connected to this database. And once I do that here, it will automatically generate a schema for the database. A 
Okay, so now we're connected. Now I can go over here. Now I can see there's my connection, my database, my tables. Library is um, some database data that I pull. I basically pulled off of a website, publiclibraries.org. Um, it's very dirty. Libraries cleaned is uh, I manually cleaned it up to kind of give me a baseline as far as how difficult it was to hand clean some of this data, and it took me about oh 14 hours plus or minus. So uh, not not the way to go. Definitely, if you had more records than about 17,000, which is often going to be the case. And then library survey is actually uh, I guess what you could say the the original data that probably this was pulled from, and many other sites I found that had public library data. Uh, I believe it comes from the well, it comes from some institute that surveyed a bunch of libraries and it was kind of partnered with the, the Census Bureau so this is actually pretty decent data um, my clean data is not bad and then this data is actually very dirty now just to, what we're gonna go ahead and do first is we're gonna look at um, just doing a column analysis so we're gonna go down actually I think we can do yeah we can do it from here we can do a column analysis uh, it's gonna want me to name the analysis we're just gonna call it library Okay, now once we're in this uh, column analysis screen, we can pick different and kind of configure how we want to do the analysis. Um, you can choose which columns. Um, this by default already shows all these columns. I know some of these basically don't contain any very much useful information, so we're going to turn those off. And then uh, we can choose indicators. Um, and what these are is basically kind of the it runs the, t the statistics on a given column um, like this simple statistics is kind of chosen by default and kind of gives us these stuff um, and then text statistics will give us some like the minimum length you know, a max and an average Come on. And then there's some of these other things in here too that I'm not going to mess with. And there's also um, what are called patterns. And basically these kind of, uh, they check your data against some kind of standard. See what matches the pattern. So this one we're going to, for this for zip codes. I'm going to go to address and we're going to choose a US zip code validation pattern. Which is right there now. And then we're going to choose, they actually have three of them for the phone number. Which I'm just going to pick all three because for some reason they all do it different and one of them will pick them up fine and the other two will not, which is odd. Probably just has something to do with the way that particular pattern recognition was implemented. So now that we have all of our patterns and all of our indicators chosen, uh, we go ahead and do this little running man here and tell it to run the analysis. make this window a little bigger so that when it pops up there will be some graphics some charts on this side okay and here we go you kinda have some summary they kinda give you some summary graphics in this screen but really to get the to the meat of it you want to go down here to this tab analysis results and that'll pull you into here and then what you can actually do is you can look at the uh, the charts are actually interactive so you can go over here you can uh, right click on it and you can say view rows it'll pop up another tab here and it'll actually show you the rows corresponding to that chart value so like down here we have blank count I could view those rows which are all boring because they're all blank um, here we have some data on uh, how many rows there are, distinct, unique, which there's some specific definition of that. 
which I don't recall, so. Um, and duplicates on down the line. And we'll go ahead and take a look at here's the zip code one. And you can see 57.35% uh, of my zip codes in the original library file match the uh, validation uh, data, and, all, and then like 42% didn't match it. There's actually quite a few. I believe there's actually quite a few. Oh, there's not quite a few blanks. Am I in the wrong one? No. Zero. Oh, there's zero blanks because all the ones that were blank were filled with zeros. That's right. So there's actually a lot that are not valid zip codes because they're zero. Because for whatever reason, when I was playing around with Excel, they ended up as zero instead of just blank. So, um, so that's kind of the basis of this. Uh, I'll go ahead and we'll take a look at a uh, file delimited. I'll file delimited, basically a separated value or a tab delimited file. Let me go ahead and call it. And browse. Oh, text files. We're going to go to the original survey data. And next. And then we want to tell it to use. Fields are separated by a tab. And it should. There we go. So now our tab delimited file is in here. I believe I can actually. I was hoping it would let me alter the column names here, but it doesn't look like I'm doing it right, so. Oh, I can change them here now that I can't see what's actually in them. I know this is states. I know this column 5 is phone numbers. Column 7 is. I don't know. Column seven's phone numbers. Yes, I know I can't. Be fine. This is zip codes. This is phone numbers. And beyond that, it basically works the same way as like a, uh, a database connection. It's just connected to a file rather than connected to a uh, database. Um, what I'll go ahead and do with this one then is show you a. Oh, I guess it won't let me do a correlation analysis on. Wow. Well, okay. Well, I'm going to show you a correlation analysis, which apparently I need a database connection for that. So we're going to go up to the MySQL version. And then zip. We'll go to now analyze correlation. Call this one core and grill analysis. This basically looks at um, how data is interconnected. We're going to look at zips and city names. It comes up with some rather interesting graphics which rather rapidly turn useless as you get a lot of data items, but what are you going to do? So we have zip selected already, and we need to go ahead and select city under select columns. So now we're good there, um, because there's 
So many of them where you're going to limit this only to, and this is basically an SQL filter, where, uh, let's see, city equals, I don't know, we'll do, we'll do this. We can actually filter it on columns that we're not even actually analyzing, but we can still filter it on that column. So we'll only pull this one. We're going to do state Montana. And then we run. I apologize. All right. And now we have our analysis is done. This is the graphic kind of, it looks very interesting. It's actually kind of a, this one's kind of misleading. It kind of looks like there's maybe some interesting stuff. It's just some weirdness that the dots ended up farther away. Um, there are actually instances where there's um, actually more than two data items connected and they'll show up as these little, they look like little starbursts. It's actually kind of cool, but alas, this is just kind of, some of the dots got moved farther than others for whatever reason. We go down here to picking and then we can move them around and you can see that there's really nothing interconnected. We can also go down here and look at uh, data and it'll actually give us a table. And if we sort on count, we can see that there is in fact, oh actually Billings and Great Falls both have two connectors. How exciting. Not. Okay. So that's correlation analysis. And now that we've analyzed our data, we've decided that it is in fact in dire need of some cleaning up. We go to our integration. And here we can create a uh, integration job. Let's go to job designs. Go to create job. It's going to be demo job. Okay. So now we're in our little job workspace here. And um, we have various uh, components that we can drop in there. We can also drop them in from our repository. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we are going to drop in our library survey and it gives me some options for how it's going to come in. I'm going to bring it in as MySQL input uh, so now we have this incoming data and we want to decide what we want to do with it on the other end so we're going to go to file output and we're going to output that as a text file maybe why is it not let me there file delimited so now we have our data incoming and our data outgoing now we need to connect them so we right click and go to row and main and we connect them. Now if I would run this job right now, it basically select everything out of this this here and drop it in pretty much exactly the same format here as a um, comma separated file or however we happen to set this one up, I believe we can actually uh, configure let's put this down here. Property is not available. Okay, I guess it doesn't want me to do anything with that. Oh, here we go. So we can actually, yeah, we can actually configure how we want to do it. And I want that as tab separated rather than semicolon separated. So let's. All right, now that we got that straightened out. So I want a tab. My fields separate by tab, so I went ahead and did that. Um, now, if I run this job now, it goes straight from there to there. It's basically a conversion there. So we want to actually do some processing on our data. So we go to processing, and one of the primary tools for processing is called uh, 
why is this not opening up more? Let's go ahead and do that. Is the T map component. So we're going to find a T map component. We're going to drop it right in here. We're going to call our output good output. And yes, we want to get some target schema. So now, if we go into here, this gives us some options for how we want our input data to be transformed before it goes into our output data. Um, now one thing, these last five fields I know are garbage. So I'm going to zap them. Clean that up a bit. I know web address. It's crap, so we're getting rid of that too. And let's just say we want to change the order that these appear in so that it's standard. Let's see, we'll do maybe name first. And then we'll do street, city, state, zip. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do it like that. It all appears graphically up here. Um, and what we can go ahead and do is say OK. Update changes, yes. Now, say we also want to integrate some data that's in one of our other databases. We can go ahead over here. We're going to grab library cleaned and drop it in up here as another. SQL input. And one thing I know about this, I want to match this up with this data by city, street address, and zip code. But one thing I know that they differ on is this data this database is all caps and this one is not. So I'm going to drop in another T mapping component. Go row main. And then here, we're going to call this processed. Okay, do I want to do it? Okay. And drop these all over here. And we are going to any of these, we can go ahead and go into here and we can modify how they get processed as they go into the output. I want all of this stuff in uppercase. So we're going to go to string handling. Now this starts getting into the stuff that's Java based. Which I know very little. Actually very little is an exaggeration. I know nothing about Java. So this is a bit of a challenge, but I think I can figure some of it out. We want to go ahead and change these things to uppercase. So we're going to do the state. Actually, I didn't need to do the state because the state's already in uppercase. I need to do the city and the street. Uppercase. It appears like I know exactly what I'm doing is because I spent hours practicing. Just so you know. Okay. All right. Now that our street, our city, in particular are in uppercase, I'll be able to match them to the data in the other database. I'll say okay. Now this one just needs to name. Wait a minute. We already have an output. Right there. So basically we have our main row data flow and then we have what's called the lookup flow here. Now if we go back into this component, we're going to see a new table over here for the process data. That's the data we just added in. Now I need to key this to 
my main data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab street, I'm going to dra drag it down and match it up there. Street, state, and city. Now that there's actually uh, different places then we can go in and we can um, insert some Java expressions to kind of do some filtering. Um, if I want to filter here before it even gets thrown into output, I can uh, and select this and activate the expression. And one of the ones I think I was using was uh, I'm going to filter out um, bad phone numbers. I say not. Uh, these are two values I know appear in that column that I don't want getting thrown into my output. So I'm going to go ahead and filter those out here. Now if I want to then add on the web address from this one, I just drop it down into here. It'll get tacked onto the end there. Now for the output, if I want to only get those um, entries that have a valid web address attached to them, what I can do is I can add another expression here. And this one I'm going to say uh, the way I went ahead and handled this one was I'm going to use a length, use a string handling expression. Basically I'm going to measure the length of the incoming web address and I'm going to reject any that are fewer than five characters which should pretty much weed out any bad ones. I'm going to say OK. Yes we want to propagate changes. And then once we have our job set up the way we want it, we go to run job somewhere. What the hell is it? Oh, that's a problem. I'm still in the wrong view. Okay, we need to be in the integration view. And then my, I was wondering, ah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, okay, so then we can run our job. With a little luck, this will work. And as it's running, it'll, some information will pop up underneath as far as what it pulled on each little step of the way. And it ran. I think I screwed something up because I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be more than two rows, but you get the idea. What the heck did I do there? Well, anyway, I can debug it some other time. Anyway, um, I think that's pretty much a uh, wrap for what I was going to show for this demonstration. Um, there's actually a lot more um, tutorials and information on how to use the Talon software on Talon's website and Talon Forge. which um, actually was a big help in, for me for figuring out how to even do this stuff in the first place. Uh, and then you go to tutorials and... No, this looks different here. I wonder what it is. And they have various tutorials show you how to do stuff and uh, 
it's all open source software it's free to download uh, there's Windows Mac and Linux versions of it and um, if Dr. Marshall decides he can give me a call and I can field any questions and uh, thank you all for your time <laughs>